Big tech absolutely hates open source AI. They are trying to sabotage the rise of open source by pushing for regulation, by preventing startups from buying AI hardware, by poaching talent from open source companies, and by trying to convince us that open source is dangerous and unsafe. So why is big tech doing all of this? Well, the reason is much darker than you think. My name is David Andre and this is the hidden AI war. The term alignment is used a lot by tech CEOs. It means making sure that AI has the same goals as we do. But there is also a second, more disturbing definition of alignment. It's not the machines you want to align, it's me. If we all use one powerful AI, like ChatGPT, we are constantly being influenced by that language model. With every single interaction, the AI pushes us closer and closer towards its own beliefs and opinions, which come from the people who created it. This is how AI could be used for alignment of the population. Now, of course, you can't do that with open models because everybody can see what's inside. This is one of the main reasons why big tech is trying to sabotage open source. But we're just getting started. The rabbit hole goes much deeper than you think. Open source has the ability to completely disrupt the revenue streams of big tech. If there's an endless amount of amazing free AI tools, why would anyone pay for Google Duet or Microsoft Copilot? Also, many top AI researchers prefer to work on open source projects because the last thing these world-class people want to do is spend years working on a project that never gets released. This is exactly why top AI engineers are leaving Google. Open source takes away power from the elite and gives it to the people. This creates more competition, which is great for the customers, but not so great for big tech. By the way, if you want me to make more videos on open source, please subscribe. It takes just two seconds. But there is far more at stake than just money and market share. This entire AI war is about control. Not just control of the AI itself, but more importantly, control of the users. See, there are only two possible futures. The first kind of future is where only the experts have access to super intelligent AI. And the second is where all of us have access. On paper, the first path doesn't sound that bad. However, if you dig deeper, if you actually think about the type of future this would create, you will realize how quickly this could go wrong. Do I want to live in a world where there's like a centralized thought police working through the tech companies to enforce the view of a small set of elites that they're going to determine what the rest of us think and feel like absolutely not the people who are in power want to remain in power this has been true throughout all of history and it is still true today big tech founders ceos and executives are some of the world's most powerful people and they will do whatever it takes to keep it that way this technology is so powerful in the wrong hands it could be used so we will charge you 9.99 for every use of it. how's that how altruistic is that what's funny is that a lot of these ai safety proponents never leave the lab they are stuck in the San Francisco thought bubble. In most cases, these people have no knowledge of history, philosophy, theology, statecraft, anything other than AI really. This makes their opinions extremely one-sided. No single person, whether that's you or me, should be deciding the fate of billions of people. The only way to truly include everyone is to make AI open source and let anyone and everyone participate. But to understand just how important this war is, we have to look at what happens if open source loses the fight. And the best example is open AI. It does seem weird that something can be non-profit open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. So what's the reason for this mysterious switch? Well, depends who you ask. The folks at OpenAI will tell you that it happened because of safety. They saw how good language models were getting and to protect us, they made them closed source. But not everyone believes this narrative. In fact, most people are quite skeptical. The timing when they stopped open sourcing their AI models matches almost perfectly with Microsoft investing into the company. GPT-1 was fully open source. The model architecture as well as the weights were publicly available. Now, GPT-2 is when things start to get weird. Like GPT-2. When OpenAI came out with GPT-2 and raised a whole fake AI safety thing about that, they used AI safety to hype up their company. But that's nothing compared to what happened with GPT-3. In 2020, when OpenAI released GPT-3, they granted Microsoft exclusive rights to the model. The AI community waited in suspense. Will anyone get access? Why is GPT-3 only available to Microsoft? And what is happening to the most promising open source AI startup in the world? Well, now we know the answer. Microsoft invested billions into OpenAI. 
and every investor wants to make a return. But how are you going to do that if everything is open source? If all of your competitors can use your language models for free. So under the pressure of Microsoft, OpenAI turned into closed AI. As you can imagine, a lot of people were disappointed by OpenAI's move. But what's even more questionable is how Sam Altman, alongside other big tech CEOs, are trying to establish regulatory capture. What that means is big tech companies having so much power over the government to the point where they could decide all the laws related to AI. And of course, they are going to push for laws and regulations that benefit them while hurting startups. That's just human nature. Recently, there was a secret AI meeting in Washington, which included basically all of the tech CEOs. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Sam Altman, Sundar Pichai, and many others. The entire discussion was held behind closed doors, which makes you wonder, what did they talk about? Did they mention open source? And why is the future of AI decided? by a handful of people. But even if we somehow manage to avoid regulatory capture, there is another great risk, industrial capture. This is when a few companies like Google and Microsoft control most of the resources and talent in the AI field. And unfortunately, we kinda already have that. But the good news is that even big tech makes some things open source from time to time. TensorFlow is a great example. It's a machine learning platform developed by Google. Another example is PyTorch an open source AI library created by Facebook. So why does Big Tech do this? Is it for the good of the people or is there some deeper strategic motive? The first explanation is ecosystem lock-in. If you begin using open source tools from Google, you are much more likely to pay for other services and products from Google. Once developers get used to a certain ecosystem, they are much less likely to switch to a competitor. Open sourcing also lets Big Tech set the industry standard, which can decide what direction the development of AI goes in. Another reason is attracting the best talent. Open source projects serve as a magnet for highly skilled developers. But the craziest paradox is investment. You will see big tech investing into startups all the time. Microsoft invested into OpenAI, Google is now investing into Hugging Face, Amazon is investing into Anthropic, but there is a downside to accepting big tech money. The more funding you get, the more control you give up. That's why you'll see companies like Amazon Amazon, Nvidia, Google, Microsoft, all of which are closed source, invest into emerging AI startups. However, not all of big tech is against open source. There is one company that's taking a completely different approach. I'm of course talking about Meta. Who would have thought that Mark Zuckerberg would be the good guy? Okay, so what is Zuck up to? Why is Meta open sourcing everything while OpenAI and Google are more and more closed? See, there aren't many companies that can train AI models as big as GPT-4, but Meta certainly certainly can and they are planning to do just that. Recently, Meta has been buying a crazy amount of H100s, the best AI chips from Nvidia, which will be used to train Llama 3. The goal is to make it better than GPT-4 while making it completely open source at the same time. Think about how insane that would be. If Zuck manages to do this, he will cause a massive hit to OpenAI and Google. By open sourcing everything, he's essentially attacking the revenue of his biggest competitors. That's a genius strategy, if you ask me. Okay, but what about safety? Isn't open source dangerous? Open source software tends to be more secure because you have more people looking at it openly and scrutinizing it and finding holes in it and that makes it more safe. So on one hand we have Sam Altman and Mustafa Saliman who tell us that open source is dangerous and needs to be regulated. But then we have Mark Zuckerberg who completely dismantles that argument using plain English. While I think it's amazing that Meta is taking this approach, there still are two major challenges facing the the open source community. The first problem is licensing. What people don't realize is that more and more licenses are either restrictive or just flat out non-commercial. This makes it much harder to develop new products using open source AI models. But the second problem is even more elusive, data. Even if the algorithms are completely open, the data often isn't. And it probably never will be, because big tech companies have a habit of using questionable methods of obtaining data. Just look at all the lawsuits against OpenAI. In June, OpenAI was accused of mass theft of personal information. 
Three weeks ago, a class action lawsuit was filed against OpenAI and Microsoft for breaking privacy laws. A group of famous American authors are now suing OpenAI for copyright infringement, and the list just keeps going. This goes to show how far OpenAI and Big Tech are willing to go. Look, the open source community absolutely is the underdog here, but I don't want to make it seem like all is lost. In fact, quite the opposite. The amount of promising open source projects only continues to grow. Stability AI is one of the biggest open source startups right now. Their main product is Stable Diffusion, which is a free alternative to Midjourney. Hugging Face is another great company. It's an open source platform for AI experts and enthusiasts. It's like GitHub, but for AI. The language models from Meta, Llama 1 and 2, have been absolutely huge for the open source community. But recently, we got an even bigger LLM from a very unexpected place, the UAE. With 180 billion parameters, Falcon is currently the largest open source AI model in the world. So is open source the answer? Should all AI models be completely open? Here is what Mark Andreessen thinks. Obviously, yes, there has to be full open source here because to live in a world in which that open source is not allowed is a world of draconian speech control, human control, machine control. The issue with letting anyone decide which AI models are allowed and which aren't is that people always become drunk with power. If you were in a position to decide what the entire world should think, you would probably use that to promote your own views and beliefs. Most people would, and tech CEOs are no different. What open source does is it makes AI decentralized. Decentralization allows anybody to pick it up and make it their own. If we make AI open source, everybody will have access to this life-changing technology. Whether you're a president or a kid from Uzbekistan, open source makes it impossible for centralized groups and institutions to control the rest of humanity. Centralized and held control is tyranny. I don't like anarchy either, but I've always taken anarchy over tyranny. I've spent a lot of hours researching and thinking about this issue. Is it possible that super intelligent AI has the potential to be dangerous? Yes, there's always a chance. However, I've realized something important. We can't solve an unlikely dystopia with a guaranteed dystopia. Let's say AI has a small chance of creating a dystopian world. Of course, we should do our best to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's assume that AI AI has a small chance of creating a dystopian world, but handing over complete control over AI to a centralized group of elites has a much higher chance of turning into a dystopia. I would much rather take the risk, go fully open source, give access to everybody and avoid the obvious threat of a centralized thought police.